So can art fix or at least leverage on the world's problems beyond the gallery walls? Well, a major new art exhibition by the Nigerian artist Chinze Ojobo, which opens in Lagos later this month, is billing itself as a sort of manual for social change. Its title is Beyond the Barriers, and it's an attempt to look beyond the COVID pandemic and all the losses that have come with it, including deaths, collapsing businesses and impoverishment. There are also elements of the exhibition that are unique to Nigeria and appear to be a subset of the country's bigger challenges, including kidnappings, child labor, poverty and issues like that. And the works to be exhibited are titled to reflect the sort of manifesto of social cohesion that looks beyond the noisy fuss and scandal of contemporary problems. Art that the artist Chinza hopes will become not just something that hangs on the wall, but a toolkit for uniting the world and a sort of database or collection of art that is preserved for posterity. Well, for more on this, I'm delighted to say that the artist Chinze Ojobo, who also happens to be the national president of the Female Artists Association of Nigeria, joins me now from our studios in Lagos. Chinze, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, that smile suggests that you can. Yeah. Good, good to have you on the program. And uh, thanks again for joining us. So an art exhibition that looks beyond the barriers of COVID and all the negativity associated with it. And that presumes that through your art, you are imagining life beyond the misery. Tell us more. Um, thank you for receiving me here. Um, my exhibition, it's called um, Beyond the Barriers. And um, Beyond the Barriers talks about you know, how we can go past, you know, the, the, the COVID came with so much. You know, when the COVID started, we entered lockdown. And um, the lockdown, everybody thought it was like a weekend thing. From week a week, you entered two weeks, three weeks, months, and several months. So during that time, a lot of people went through not only the shock of a death of loved ones, also a lot of things happened, businesses closed down, things shut down and all that. And as I'm speaking to you now, a lot more people are still there, you know, afraid to come out, you know, um, afraid to embrace the world and the changes that came with the COVID-19. So this exhibition actually is to speak, you know, to people, you know, like to bring that to, you know, like getting people to talk to themselves, you know. So it's like it's something you advise yourself, take personal decisions, you know, make up your mind that I have to look beyond this, I have to walk past this, this, yes, the business closed down, yes, loved ones died, yes, a lot of, you know, negative things like there's a lot of poverty that caused all the killings and the kidnappings and the rapings and all the stuff, you know, how, you know, those things like telling you yourself, like a therapy, you know, you're talking to your emotions, you know, walking past the situation and getting done what you need to do, you know, seeing that there's a tomorrow, a lot of people think is the end, you know, nothing to look forward to, but, you know, you have to you know, walk through it, walk past it, and you know, get to where you have to get to. So that's the theme of my exhibition. Right. It all sounds uh, very interesting. So clearly a strong message uh, there that in a, in a sort of way, uh, COVID has actually shown us that we cannot succeed just as isolated individuals or nations. I mean, I read some of that in your write-up there, but uh, as a united world looking out for each other. So there's a strong message of togetherness there. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, because of the COVID thing, like I said, you know, the technology came in and kind of united everybody, brought all of us on a central stage. So we are all working on the same space, and um, your, what you're doing here in Nigeria is somewhere resonating in another part of the world and other parts of the world. So it's like one space now, and it's like the COVID has brought people together, and it means that we should, you know, work together. 
there should be peace amongst all sort things out. So, so that's why I actually emphasized on walking past the COVID. So it's a, a collective thing that the whole world, you know, together, we work together, sort this thing out so that we can, you know, come out of the situation. You know, you think you're coming out, then there's another variant coming in. So it's kind of, you know, it's a lot. So a lot of people can't take it. So that working together, that uh, technology uniting us has made it, you know, like we're all looking out for each other and everybody knows what the next person is feeling because it's, you know, it, it's kind of a general thing. And um, different countries suffer different things. But, you know, in, I know in my own country, Nigeria, there's a lot coming out that came out of it. All the negative stories, you know, the kidnappings and all the killings and all those things. It's out of the poverty, you know, people suffering, no money. A lot of people are forced to do things. So that uh, coming together, the technology thing bringing us together has helped. So we need to, like everybody, you know, work together, Akin. And um, I also talked about people, re you know, relearning. A lot of people have learned, you know, what you used to do in the past before COVID might not be, you know, um, how will I say, might not be current now. So you need to relearn, you need to learn something new, you need to work, you need to flow with the newness or the new things or the new world that came with the COVID. The technology is playing a huge role and we need to work with the technology. We need to, you know, upgrade, we need to flow so that we can get past the situation. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're almost saying that COVID, I mean, you're looking at COVID in retrospect when in fact COVID is still there. I mean, you sound as though you're saying that it's almost like it's over when it clearly isn't. I mean, so you're, you, but what you're, let me, I'm trying to understand that your, your prescription it is that even over. if it's not over, let's start to look to the future. Is that what, what it is? Yes, like, well, that's what I was saying, that when we thought it was over, then another variant, the Omicron, came up again. And it's, you know, it worsens the situation of the people. So that's what I'm saying, so that we should now begin to work together as one so that we can get past the situation and make this to be at the back. Because we, you know, we need to go forward. We can't just stand and wait for all the viruses to be coming and coming and coming and entering lockdown and lockdown and lockdown and each lockdown comes with its own. It comes with poverty, it comes with lack, it comes with pain. And we don't need more lockdowns, we don't need the virus. So we need to look, you know, work together as one and walk past the situation. So that's, you know, what I think. And that's what I'm, you know, depicting in my painting. Right, okay. I, I think I sort of get the, the drift of it. So let's now... I mean, let's, let's, I'm trying now to see how this hopeful world that's leveraging on all the negative stuff that you were talking about, how does it all manifest itself in your art? Uh, I'm seeing um, things like, you know, I am possible and, and dare to dream and uh, I, I'm alive, I made it and where do I go from here? Um, how does all that manifest itself in your art and this exhibition? Yeah, you know, in, um, in this whole COVID thing, a lot of people, uh, we talked about that, yes, a lot of us, a lot of old people died, but a lot of youths were kind of affected, you know, you know, financially, a lot of them, you know, were really, really affected by this. If you remember the SARS and SARS thing and all that. So this um, whole exhibition, what I try to put forward is encouraging people. Like I am possible, that dream, that plan, that thing you have in your mind, that thing you've always thought you could do. Okay, like before the COVID, we had so many activities we planned, lined up and you know had a calendar working and suddenly everything came to a halt. And it's as if, oh, I can't, you know, get up from where I am. But what I'm saying is get up, that thing that you think is impossible can be possible. Put your mind to it, walk at it, walk with, walk with what you have, start where you are. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, if I was here, it would have been better if I was there, you know. So all those things, all the frustrations you're seeing, all the, the uh, clamorings from the youth, it's all part of the frustration that came from that COVID. Yeah, and well, so that's what I'm saying. I, I understand to... all that, uh, Chinze. What I'm trying to, I, I understand that. What I'm trying to understand 
is how that manifests itself in your art. How does the, the paintings that you've made reflect those things that you're talking about? How do we see those things in your art? Okay, I made it like, there's an artwork I called I Am Possible. And in that particular painting, there was a woman in the painting advising people. So in my work, I used my work to speak to various people. And that, I wrote it in clear handwriting, I Am Possible. What you know, what you put uh, the thoughts, any thought you have in your heart, what you have in your mind to do, do it, put uh, your mind strongly in it, do it, and you're going to get the end result. And it's all about like setting goals. So I made those things clear. My paintings, there is the one I call Dare to Dream. Dare to Dream is two girls trying to, you know, they have plans and take a, take a step and do that thing you planned. You know, don't just, you know, sit down and, you know, look. And like I said, there was one I said, you know, do what the clock is doing. The clock moves. So move. Take a move. Then I have another one. Keep moving. So it's all words that are encouraging people, you know, to keep moving, to keep doing what they want to do, to keep seeing the light at the end of a tunnel. There's a light, yes. It's not going to, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. So we need to encourage ourselves. We need to, and that's why I said to you that this work is to speak to ourselves, so you tell yourself that, you know, move on. Tell yourself, this plan I have can, ha can happen. This can work. I can, you know, work on this. So that's why I said I am possible. I am possible is that ability to do that thing is inside of me. So I will put it to work. I don't have to sit and look. I will put that thing to work. So that's why I had my work and I had um, good thoughts. Good thoughts also like people, you have to think good thoughts. So you have to be positive at every time. You know, you don't, you know, you don't get scared. You don't back out. So that's how I had them all in my mind. Okay, well, stay with us. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the National President of the Female Artists Association of Nigeria, Chinze Ojobo. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Inyukulu. Now, my first guest today, Chinze Ojobo, is a Nigerian artist of considerable international repute. She's the founder of Culture Code Art Hub in Nigeria and the national president of the Female Artists Association of Nigeria. With her distinctive artwork and her unique, detailed, and highly textured paintings that are rich in symbolism, she continues to attract lots of attention across Nigeria and beyond. She recently received Africa's most prestigious art prize, the 2018 African Creative Artist of the Year Award, which was bestowed on her in the House of Commons in London at an event hosted by the respected MP, the Right Honourable Diane Abbott. She's been using her art to drive home socially conscious messages, including gender equality, the plight of the girl child and the horrors of poverty and child labour. Her latest exhibition, which opens in Lagos on the 15th of December, imagines a more hopeful world after the COVID pandemic. And uh, Chinze Ojobo is still with me from our studios in Lagos. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about yourself beyond your um, exhibition that's coming up on the 15th of December. I mean, your, your art has ranged from recycled material to using, um, you know, canvas and all the rest of it. Tell us how you come up with these ideas, because, I mean, your, your works have become enormously successful, not just in Nigeria, but internationally. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I've always experimented with different materials. So I started um, with the canvas, acrylic and canvas, oil and canvas, watercolors. But as I proceeded, I had um, this exhibition we had at um, Bulgaria, and that was where they taught us how to do, use the recycled materials. We got there, they said, go out, pick anything, work with it. And we did that, it was like a competition. I won, and that was what partly, you know, influenced my style of work. I started working with different materials, and I told myself that everything has a potential. It depends on how you use it. 
you know, you can convert anything, anything can be art. Because, I mean, life itself is art. Everything around us is art. So everything, anything can be converted. So I started working. Like, during the COVID, I ran out of materials. My usual canvas, jade bag. I resorted to using wood. So that's why in this body of work I had now, they are all, you know, wood, acrylic on carved wood. So it's kind of that thing to experiment, that thing pushing me, you know, to exert to, like now, the wood, I'm experimenting with the wood and I've turned it into something else. You know, you keep working, you keep experimenting, you keep trying, you keep stretching. Everything has a potential to become something else. So I, that inquisitive thing in miniature makes me, you know, I try to do experiment and now I'm taking from one step to the other and like that I worked a lot of material. So that's what, but this particular work I have now, it's kind of mixed media. I have wood, a lot of wood work in it and I have, a, I work with resin also and I have a, on canvas and anchor. So these are the various materials I work with. Well, I mean, I have to say I'm totally fascinated, maybe because it's absolutely impossible for me to come up with any kind of art, my, artwork myself, but I'm absolutely fascinated by the way and the process that you go through to get to your art. I mean, how do you make a decision? Say, okay, right, I'm going to talk about the girl child or about poverty or about, you know, child labor or, or something. And, and, and then how do you decide how that is going to appear on your canvas? And how, how long does it take you to get from start to finish? Okay, um, let me answer the first one first. How do I decide? Number one, you know, I get, if, um, first of all, by the things I see, you know, you, you, the things you experience, the things you see, the things that run through your mind every time, because I tell people that my work is in my mind. And because my work is in my mind, I do a lot of thinking. And what is that thing that I think about every time? What that, what's that thing that keeps bothering me? What is that thing that confronts me every day? You know, like you wake up, that thing you see every time. So that's what I, at times I start working on it. I start reading up on it, trying to, you know, research. So this is this, why is this like this? And from my research, I start, you know, building a body of work. I start working and start thinking, okay, what material will be perfect for this? And that's the way I walk around it. You research it and you work on it and know why is this is like this. What is the cause of this and how can this be sorted? So that's why, like when I do the girl child, what is the problem? Why? How? Why is the girl child the endangered species? Why do they think the girl child? Everybody bullies the girl child, and why is that? Everybody's eyes is on the girl child. So, what does the girl child need? How? And so, like that, you know, what material will be best to express this? How? And I'll start working and thinking. But like I said, I do a lot of thinking, and you know, like I pray, and I'm thinking while I while I'm praying, I'm trying to, you know, get ideas. What will work with this? And I spend time alone, working on it, making sketches, you know, trying to, like, if, even if you get the material, how do you move it from one end, like I said, from an idea form to a finished form? I keep working. And at times you work, you know, what you're seeing is not what is in your mind. You know, you keep working with it. And so I work with the materials I have. And um, because I work with the materials I have, I don't, you know, like, stress myself. Like, anything I see, I, I try to see how can I infuse this with this. So like I've chosen my materials, then I'll start you know, sitting down, working. How can I convert this to this? There's a lot of thinking, but at the end of the day, I come up with this one. Like when I started with the wood, it was very heavy. I couldn't carry the wood. I said, how can I make artworks I can carry? So every time I need to move my artwork, I, I need people to do that. I said, no. So I had to experiment, and I brought it down to where it is now. I can use uh, the, the two fingers to pick them now. And the same thing on that heavy wood is the same thing on the light wood. So you experiment, you keep trying, you know, you keep, you know, stretching yourself and keep working and do a lot of thinking and a lot of research. You know, that's how you know, we come up with that. With that thing. Sounds very interesting. Um, but just returning to your current exhibition, that opens on the 15th of December. Um, where, where can people, is it open to the public? Where can people see it sort of thing? Yes, I'm doing it in my studio. I have a studio at Banana Island Road, 
And um, I'll be doing it there for like three days, 15th to the 18th of December. Right. So, so, so it's open to the public, is it? People can come and see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they can come and see it, yes. Right. And, and would it be fair to call this exhibition a kind of trailblazer for contemporary art activism in Nigeria? Because, I mean, you, a lot of what you said, uh, you, you're clearly influenced by political, economic, social developments around you, and you try to manifest that in your art. And that's a kind of art activism, isn't it? And you're, you're sort of taking, taking up the mantle as a trailblazer in that direction. Yes, I've always done that, you know, like making statements through my paintings and, um, you know, anything confronting us, like anything that I know. Because uh, as an artist, like I tell people, I don't know how to say it, but I can draw it. So I don't know how to say it, I'll draw it. So that's why through my art, I try to, you know, say those things that are in my mind, you know, speak my mind. Like when I did, there's, when I had the one for the girl child, there's a particular one I did you know, on the rape thing. And what I did in that one is I had the girl raped, you know, died, dead, you know, it was a, I used a jute bag to sculpt it, so it was a sculpture. Then all around the pictures, I had newspaper clips of those stories on rape cases. I had it all over. So anybody it sounds, looks at it, it all sounds brilliantly interesting, Chinze. It sounds really marvelous. And I would urge people to actually go and see your artwork because I've seen it and I'm hugely impressed. Chinze Ojobo is the artist uh, talking to me there from our studios in Lake.